We watched WWF Raw number 34, October 4th, 1993. Yeah, we did. It opened with the Intercontinental Battle Royal. Yeah, 5, it did. 5,795 pounds of humanity, Vince exclaims. Wow, he edited it up. That's what he said. You know, I'm sure, I'm sure yeah. one of his flunkies did it, but... Uh, so, so the back then I doubt it. Nobody sat down with a calculator, and did it himself. Man, and by he added, added four hundred pounds. <laughs> so the first segment was just intros, and they go to commercial. The match starts uh, as they're doing the intros in the first segment. Vince mentions, as Heenan is saying, only a coward would hide. Vince says, "I saw you do that in a battle royal in Chicago once," and Heenan did not deny it. So he came out just fine. I think that's actually on one of the like best of the WWF cassette tapes. That I saw. I remember Bobby Heenan inexplicably being at a battle royal and hiding under the ring the entire time. So we go to commercial. There's a graphic. This will amuse me and like four other copy editor dorks. But uh, the graphic reads over the top rope battle royal, which is fine. Only instead of hyphenating over the top rope, they used M dashes. So it reads over the top rope battle royal. Fuck is an M dash. It's a very long dash. It's as long as the letter M. That's why it's called an M dash. So the match finally begins. What a dork. I told you about him. Use me and four God, of the people. Holy smokes. <laughs> so the last two in are the giant Gonzalez who just stands oh, there. Oh, I thought you were talking, I you jumping all the way to the end of the match. No. The last, last two last... enter entrance. Thank you. The last okay. two to enter the match. I mean, honestly, there's not much in between. Um, so giant is number 19. He's in there standing big. And Savage is number 20. He goes straight to the top rope, hits an axe handle in Gonzalez. Everyone swarms Gonzalez and throws him out. And then there's not another elimination for like 10 more minutes. Bro, I'm watching this match and I thought, man, battle royals were so different back then. Like nowadays, it's like you're throwing people out the whole time. Back then, they just brawled for 10 minutes before anybody got thrown out. And then Bobby Heenan notes, how come no one's getting thrown out? Yeah. I'm used to everyone going out immediately. So I don't know why everyone's putting in time. We need I mean, <laughs> fuck. If I'm in an intercontinental battle royale, I'm not winning. I'm getting the fuck out of there as fast as I can. They they did go 23 minutes. So. Yeah, fuck. Well, that's, that's 23 minutes. That's not kind of the commercials. This show was half over by the time yeah, the yeah. battle royale was, was Yeah, done. and actually, when you think about it, that 23 minutes, I think 20 of it was when it was down to the last four. Might be, actually, yeah. So the only thing of note, and before it gets down to the end there, is that... Uh, uh, Diesel's in this match, and Diesel's brought in to be Shawn Michaels' bodyguard. We've only seen him in the tracksuit cowboy boots combo, and he's in here, and by and large, he looks like Diesel. There's no logo on the gear, but he's got the glove and the black singlet and the leather pants and the fringe. It looks like Big Daddy Cool, and they get Gonzalez out right away. Now Diesel's the tallest guy in the match, and he's working guys over, and it's, it's, it's green Kevin Nash, but he's tall and he's got that hair and he's got these great facials and he's just clubbering dudes and as he's working guys over in the corner if you listen to Vince you can hear him falling in love with this guy <laughs> and talking himself <laughs> into what's going to happen in another year or two and then he gets thrown out and then nothing happens like 15 more minutes it, we get well down. the one two three kid got thrown out by Bastion Booger yes that's, that's right. what I knew man they've given up on this poor bloke he's done for the time being I was biding my time by watching guys throw punches, and I was rating them on a one to four scale. A one to four? Yeah, I don't like to do a lot of math. So um, anyway, uh, you have five fingers, Craig. You can do five. Yeah. Anyway, um, Mabel, holy cow, that's a bad punch. That's a zero. Yeah. So Kevin why don't you Nash. do one to five then? <laughs> Brian, it's my scale. Shut up. Zero, one, anyway. two, three, four. That's five. You should have just done one to five. Brian, I wasn't doing that. I was making a joke. All right. Anyway. Anyway, Kevin Nash, horrible punch. Randy Savage, five. Well, yeah. <laughs> All right. So it gets down. Usually it's, usually in Battle Royals, it's the final four where they actually, like, actually start doing stuff. This time it was a final six. Because there's two good guys, Razor Ramon and Randy Savage, and four bad guys, the Quebecers, Rick Martell, and Adam Baum. And that's the point where the bad guys make a huddle and say, we, if we work together, we can double-team both these blokes. It took a fucking huddle to figure this out. Dude, every <laughs> Quebecers segment has a huddle. You notice this? Every yeah, match, every promo, true. there's a long huddle to discuss what they're going to do. So you've got uh, Adam Baum and the French Canadians. And they're working these guys over and I'm watching this. And it occurs to me, oh my God, the next time... Next time WWE needs to, does a Halloween show, or maybe, if, they, if they can do a Halloween show in Canada, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens need to be the Quebecers. <laughs> Don't tell me that wouldn't be great. 
The Quebecers are over in my house because I told the, them the story, my my son and my wife, about the, uh, the about the Mounties, and I yes. pointed out that we're not the Mounties. The Quebecers are over <laughs> okay. on Tuesdays when I'm watching this show. So Savage is able to fight back and get Adam Bomb out of there, but then the Quebecers throw him out, and now Razor it's Razor Ramon against all of Quebec on his own. And they're working him over for a long time. They whip him in and go for a triple drop kick when he hooks the ropes and they all go splat in the mat. That was great comedy. And they're working him over for a while. Eventually, he's able to like boot Martel in the guts or Martel goes to the corner. And now that it's the Quebecers double teaming him. But he dodges and uh, let's see. Pierre accidentally throws out Jacques and then Razor throws out Pierre. And that's our final two. Razor Ramon and Rick Martel. And uh, they will fight for the Intercontinental title next week. Once it got down to those six dudes, it was okay. But the part before that was took forever. Bro, ever, I, ever. I fucking watched this. And it's one of those things that Vince, he, it was one of his trademarks. Okay, we're going we're gonna to triple team Razor. But our fans are dumb. So I want you to triple team this fucker for nine minutes, goddammit. They're fucking triple teaming this guy. For a fucking eternity. I'm like, God damn, I got it. Like, you got him, guys. Can we fucking start this comeback already? And they keep beating him and beating him. And they used to do this all the time on Raw when there would be like some big attack after a match and somebody was supposed to get over as a heel. They'd fucking beat down the baby face for like 15 fucking straight minutes. And you're so sick of it by the end. It's just like, God, this is a wrong kind of heat. But that's what he did. And he did it here. And I mean, listen. I don't know. I mean, I'm no dummy, apparently. Well, but uh, these fans, they fell for it, hook, line, and sinker. They kept beating on this guy, and they beat on him, and they beat on him, and they beat on him. I turned on the match, <laughs> but these fans got totally in a razor. They did. They really wanted to see him make his comeback. There have been some blatant crowd sweetening in the first 20 to 30 minutes. That was not this, though. When Razor they made his comeback. They were fucking yeah. ready for him to make his comeback after he'd sold for 15 bloody minutes. And then uh, finally he wins. And uh, it's him and Martel next week. And it's funny. I have a lot of memories of this period. Very vivid memories, in fact. But when it came down to about the last eight guys, I knew Razor won. But I could not for the life of me remember which of these other blokes ended up facing him for the Intercontinental title. And I think when it got down to like the Quebecers and Rick Martel, I started to remember Rick Martel. <laughs> but it must not have been a very memorable match, is my uh, my thought. I remember that it was Razor Martel. I do remember nothing about the match itself. Yeah. So. You know, Tom, it was abundantly clear this week that I just don't get enough respect. Excuse me? I feel I deserve a little bit of credit for your, your recent success. You want to take credit for my victory in the G1 Climax? You can fuck off. Why don't you put your money where your little mouth is and get in the ring with me? No. If you, if you really want to take credit for this shit. There's a tweet from August 3rd. Who wants to make it happen? I'll team with Debbie Malenko. Why don't you call up Billy Starks and why don't you step in the ring against me and her, huh? I'll text yeah, her right, right now. I'll be in Chicago all out weekend. How about that? I'll call up Mikey. The black label? Yeah. Debbie, are you available all out weekend? Look at those arms. Brian's not even in ring shape for this. Show me yours, Tom. Huh? Look at this. Go back and forth. Huh? Go back. Jared, put yours up. Go back. 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 Oh, yeah, who's not in ring shape now, motherfucker? She can't do it. She can't do it? She can't do it. This is like when we grappled, Brian, and you clearly tapped. Oh, fuck off. I... What a dick. Oh, so now now you're getting fired up? Well, fuck, dude. You know, we can settle this. God. You know, we can settle this. You meet me in Chicago. Buddy. I'm I'm in. You've agreed. Yeah, I've agreed because you don't have Thanks a fucking me. partner. I will beat dude. your ass silly. <laughs> yeah, I'm texting him right now. Mikey, by the way, okay. Yes, all caps. I'm not the only killer that you're going to be in there with, Brian. Killer Kelly. See you in Chicago. Although I, I was just alerted that the show is at 11 o'clock p.m., so I, I may have to pull out. That's past my bedtime. So if you're going all out weekend, Black Label Pro, Friday, September 2nd. I can't wait to beat your ass. Not going to happen. It's been years in the making.